Um, I'm from NPC, the Moving Picture Company, and I'm going to be talking to you today about three main attributes. Tenacity, an eye for detail, and passion for what you do. And I think if you have these three things, you can make it and have a career in VFX. My name is Jayla Shafiat Jawara. I'm the head of NPC University, which is our internal training um, division. I also used to be head of technical animation. So on the Jungle Book, my department were responsible for all of the hair simulation. So anytime you see the hair in water or the fur moving in the wind, that was us. Also the cloth simulation, so elephant ears and balloon belly and things like that. And all of the plant dynamics, which was any interaction, any interaction with trees, plants, etc. That was my department. Um, Going back to the theme of tenacity and a passion for what you do, the way that I got into the industry was about 15, 16 year old. Um, I asked my career advisor, oh, I want to work in film, I want to work on movies, what do I need to do? And he said, you're in England and there is no film industry in England, so do something more sensible like become a teacher. Yeah. Um, for me, this just made me want to do it more. So that was my personality, that's my tenacity. I looked at courses in England that could get me into film. There was a degree in computer visualization and animation. And I thought, great, art, computing, technology, these are things I'm interested in. This is the perfect career for me. The other thing that happened was I didn't get on that degree. I didn't get accepted to the degree I wanted to take. So have to start my plan again, have to have my tenacity, my passion for what I do. So um, art and computing, still my passions. I did multimedia design, so there we learned everything, animation, web design, print, everything you can imagine. So I did that for three years. I got a job in uh, a graphic design company, actually a toy design company. I designed rocking horses, bicycles, stickers, everything you can imagine, and then I worked in graphics design, did logos, websites, but I still wanted to work in film. I still wanted to work in 3D. So I found a uh, specific course in Maya, which is the software that we use mostly at my company. And um, I went to Escape Studios, which is still around today. I did a 12-week course in 3D. And uh, then I got a placement. I did a pitch for a cartoon. animation. So with that I was able to build a showreel that got me noticed by a company, uh, the BBC, hope you've heard of it. And um, I worked at the BBC in their children's division for a little while. And then I went to the moving picture company um, where I stay till today. So it's just that determination, that passion for what you do and that tenacity that is going to get you where you want to be. Also be willing to um, take the experience over the pay <laughs> a lot of the time. Uh, so moving on to the Jungle Book, uh, we watched it last night, hopefully many of you attended. Uh, how did we make this film? How did we approach it? So we're going to hear a little bit from John Favreau, the director, of how we approach this new world of essentially fully CG, realistic environment. Because we had decided to use this completely virtual environment approach, we figured it's an opportunity to take the best of the animation process and the best of motion capture and the best of live action. You combine those things, you can do something nobody's done before. You can just walk, we'll add everything else, and I was like, but how? That's not possible, but they made it possible. This is a virtual production workflow. We're trying to leverage the latest technologies that are available to us in lighting, rendering, and interactivity to enable a new set of tools to visualize shots that they would see on a live action set. What makes us able to make this movie now is the technology to have photo real animal animation. Boy, you look at that. Camera set. Ah, action. 
Every single shot requires hundreds of people and a tremendous amount of collaboration. A lot of it is research. You just do a ton of research, and that is your basis of reality. And the research is good because it sparks ideas and different ways of looking at it, and you get to kind of live it and walk through it. Sliding wrinkles, uh, nine million curves of hair on the gear alone that were simulated to create its final look. We then start moving into blocking animation, which is animation doing a first pass of how the, the motion might look on a um, rig of the era where you can see the muscles and the fat all applied. Atmospheric passes and depth of field, so you can get like the mist in the background of the jungle. Particles, did you notice these in the original shot? Little mosquitoes and dust particles in the air. Another layer, of course, they can't go through the trees, they can't go through Mowgli, so we have to simulate them with these to interact with. My department, technical animation, we are animating the branches, the leaves. We need to detect little movements in some of the leaves in the foreground. Moss on the trees, of course, how can you miss the moss? Um, basically, when you watch oh, the show, Oh, that's to know was dead. It had a free vine. Any tree girdled by a creeper is either dead or close to it. These are things a wolf must know. In and out of the water. So if you have long hair and it's dry, that's fine. If you put it in water, it starts to take on a different motion. It's slower. It, it has no gravity to it. It's moving in a very different way. When that hair then comes out of the water, it's clumped. It's got a different state. These different states of hair, we could never do before with our in-house solver. So we had to use Houdini, uh, which is another software you might be aware of. And what Houdini gave us was the ability to change the state of a curve along its CVs. So we're changing, as you can see here, the style of the fur along not just like um, one hair, but along the different levels of points on the hair. So that was, uh, that was quite a technical challenge for us. And then um, lighting and effects. We've done all our magic and lighting and effects take it on. Effects add their beautiful water simulation, also done in Houdini. And uh, lighting, obviously, give the, the light, the shade, the shadows, ray tracing, make it all look beautifully real. And then here is the whole sequence, just so you get an idea of what we receive in the plate and what we did with it finally. Considering a similar approach on all of these sequences, including adding the jungle, animals, etc., it's quite a revelation. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about 